Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Let me introduce the new series, Show Me How. In Show Me How, I'll give a complete teaching in a specific topic request from you guys. Last week, I received a message from Lai, asking for a complete teaching of the topic 9 Thin Film Interference. No bullshit, let's go. Let's begin with the rope analogy. It begins with a thin line. Let's label this one as the fishing line. On the other end, there is a thick and heavy rope. Let's make it a long metal chain. What we are going to do is to hold the fishing line and then flick it just once. Flick it once to create a pulse. This pulse is traveling towards the metal chain. As the fishing line hits the interface, it's going to bounce back. And because the long metal chain is very heavy, it has a great inertia. That's why the reflective fishing line would be upside down. But the long metal chain, it was stationary. So whatever force acts on it, wherever it goes. This is the pattern of the long metal chain after receiving the pulse. We will label the left hand side one as a reflected wave. The metal chain approaching to the right, it is a transmitted wave. Next, we are going to repeat the whole process starting with the pulse beginning from the long metal chain approaching towards the stationary fishing line. What we are about to see is that the long metal chain would hit the fishing line and that's why the fishing line would start going up and moving to the right. The reflected pulse within the long metal chain is still displaced upward and now is reflected to the left. To conclude, what is the condition to make a pulse upside down? Firstly, it must be a reflected wave. Also, it must be reflecting from a medium of higher refractive index. The take-home message for today is, in order to have a pi phase change, there must be a reflection going on a medium of higher refractive index. Let's take a look at the summary table here. On this table, I have made a drawing on the left hand side to show you which part of the pulse is being considered. Let's take the first one for example. We are studying the reflected fishing line, so I made it in green. Firstly, it is definitely a reflection. And comparing the refractive index, it was traveling from a lower refractive index towards a higher refractive index. Because of these two criteria are satisfied, there is a pi phase change, also known as 180 degree phase change. How about the rest? You can give a pause to the video and try to fill up the missing information. The answer is to be reviewed in a few seconds. Seems like you are ready. Let's take a look at my answers. If you find your answer is different, feel free to leave a comment below and we shall have a further discussion. How about on the right hand side? I leave them blank because I'm going to show you some other drawing. On the right hand side, I put the incident wave pattern. Therefore, we focus on the incident wave itself, varying with the time. For instance, the incident wave, if it is continuous, it should be going like this one. And now it meets the interface at this point. If there is no phase change, then the wave should be continued, like this dotted line. But there is a pi phase change happening at the interface. So the wave is inverted. Then the correct drawing would be the solid line drawing. What about the metal chain route traveling towards the fishing line? The instant continuous wave is as usual, and because there is no pi phase change, therefore after meeting the interface, the wave is continued as usual. This is the pi phase change. Here you can see there is no phase change. Let's get to the focus of today's topic, the thin film interference. 
There are two categories of thin film interference. Let's begin with the air film air interface. This is more common. The actual light ray traveling is going in perpendicular to the interface, which means the light ray is falling perpendicularly, reflected perpendicularly. If it refracts into the film, it's still going perfectly perpendicularly, and it may reflect perpendicularly. That's why it is a correct but stupid drawing, because you can never identify these four arrows. They are overlapping. That's why no matter if you go to your test book, school lecture slide, or if you go on Google, you will never see these drawings because they are useless. Usually, we will see the following drawing. Looks like the ray is traveling at an angle theta, but this angle theta is zero degree. It's just for the sake of teaching only. Firstly, this ray hitting the interface would reflect back into the air. This is a reflection, and it is reflecting from a higher refractive index, so it's undergoing a pi phase change. How about the ray refracted into the film? Because it is a refraction, there is no phase change. How about at this point? It is going to reflect, but it is reflecting from a medium of lower refractive index. Therefore, there is no phase change either. And there is no phase change here either. These two rays, they are going to your eye. And because there are two waves going to the observer eye, Therefore, we shall see an interference at the eye. Even if you study the subsequent waves, none of these rays, they are having any pi phase change because they are all reflecting from a medium of lower refractive index. After that, for the teaching purpose, I'm going to make the lines in green, red, and blue. Let's begin with the drawing of the no phase change ray. The no phase change ray started as the green section. Let's make it one cycle first. And then it travels into the film because it is traveling inside a medium of higher refractive index. Therefore, it slowed down, the wavelength is compressed. Let's make it to complete cycle. After that, it is going back to air. So the wavelength is back to its original length. And it is, for my teaching purpose, is blue. Similarly, we can do the same on the pi phase change ray. The pi phase change ray started as green, just like the one above, as they are from the same light source. However, it did not go through the film, so we can skip the red parts. We continue with the blue part, but we have to make it inverted because it is pi phase changed. So it goes like this one. Now these two rays, they are going to the observer eye. And what do the observer see? The observer should see a destructive interference. According to the blue ray going to the observer eye, they are meeting in antiphase. Studying these two rays, we can see that their path difference is the red section. And these path difference, according to our drawing above, it should be the two times of the thickness. And when it is integral multiple of wavelength, just like in our case, there are two cycles. When it is integral multiple of the wavelength, it's giving you a destructive interference. How do we represent, in general, any integral multiple of the wavelengths? Certain times, let's label as m times of the wavelength inside the film. Lambda is the wavelength outside the film. The wavelength inside the film is lambda over n. And this is how you derive the equation in a data booklet. Destructive interference is 2 dn equals to m times lambda, where m is any integers. 
However, I highly recommend using my equation because my equation show you the exact path difference. The path difference is 2d, not 2dn, is 2d. And the lambda over n here is the wavelength inside the film. Next, I'm going to make another drawing to show you the constructive interference. It is created by one pi phase change and the other one having no phase change. The following path difference is going to be half a cycle. If you are confident, you may give a pause to the video, make your own drawing, and then continue the video and we can check the answer together. Seems like you are ready. Let's proceed. This is my answer to the drawing of constructive interference. Similarly, I highly recommend using my equation rather than the data booklet one. However, if you don't bother to memorize any equations, feel free to stick with the data booklet. It's still being correct. Just note that the path difference is not to the n. The path difference is 2 times d. Also, the wavelength inside the film is not lambda. It's lambda over n. The upcoming one is a tricky setup. There are three layers, air, film A, and film B. Note that their refractive index, starting with air being 1, film A being the higher one, and film B being the highest one. There are some lights going into film B, but we are not going to study that. So we only study the air and film A rays. The light ray would reflect first, and also the light ray would keep reflecting inside the film A and then coming out. Let's pause the video here and think for a while. Which of these rays is going to have a pi phase change or is it having no phase change at all? The answer is as follow. The first one, it reflects upon the interface. It's reflecting from a medium with higher refractive index. So there is a pi phase change. The other ray, it transmit into the film A because it is a refraction, there is no phase change. But at this position, there is a reflection and it is reflecting from film B. It's even higher refractive index. So this ray, it is pi phase change. Next one, the reflection here. There is a reflection reflecting from a medium with lower refractive index. Therefore, there is no pi phase change. And here, there is another pi phase change. Because there was one existed pi phase change already, the duplicated one is making it no phase change at all. Just like having 180 degree change, and then another 180 degree change, which means you have in total 360 degree change, which is equivalent to no change at all. Lastly, here, you can find a pi phase change because of reflecting from a medium with higher refractive index. So there is a pi phase change. Next, we'll take a look at a similar analysis just like the previous one. However, both of the rays here, they have undergone pi phase change so I put down going through the film A in the brackets to distinguish them. The one above is starting with the green parts and then it travel into the film. When it is inside the film, we use red wave to represent. And it is a narrower wavelength because the wavelength is compressed as it is slowed down. Moreover, there is a pi phase change happening at this point. So we are going to invert the wave just like this one to indicate there is a pi phase change. At the end of the film A, it's going back to transmit into the air. The transition from film A to air is not going to be a phase change at all. So you just continue the previous pattern and complete the drawing. That's it for the first drawing. The second ray. The one that did not go into the film A. It began just like the other one, and then we skip the red part, continue with the blue. The transition between the green and the blue is a pi phase change transition. So it is inverted. 
When these two lights go to the observer eye, what does the observer see? A constructive interference is observed since the blue rays going to the observer eyes is meeting in phase. What is the path difference responsible for such constructive interference? The path difference in this case is two cycle and which is similarly two times of the thickness of the film. It is m times lambda over n, integral multiple of the wavelength in the film. The equations for both rays undergone pi phase change in a thin film interference, they are not given in a data booklet. The good news is, I can give you the equations. Let's take a look at the equation together, shall we? Finally, the take home message here is, if there is only one ray undergoing the pi phase change, you can simply use the equations given in your formula sheets. However, if both rays they have gone through a pi phase change, what should you do? You should switch the equation given in your data booklets. The algebra they are fine, but switch their position. The constructive one is the m times lambda. The destructive one will be m plus half times lambda. Don't forget that the condition for a pi phase change to occur is a reflection from a medium with a higher refractive index. Let's take a look at a past paper question together. It is a past paper in 2019. There are three different layers in the picture. Starting with the air, n equals to 1, the magnesium fluoride, n equals to 1.38, and lastly, the lens, n equals to 1.58. As you can see, the refractive index is going to higher and higher step by step. Therefore, we shall see both rays going through a pi phase change. This is the most important fundamental information throughout the whole question. Part A, predict whether the ray X is undergoing a pi phase change or not. The answer is yes, it is going through a pi phase change. And the question did not ask for an explanation. So that's how you get to mark. Part B1 express in terms of D the path difference of two rays. Very simple, it's the V shaped path. Note that the angle theta here is actually zero degree. Therefore, the path difference is 2d, not 2dn. Even though the mark scheme accepts your answer being 2dn, but actually that's wrong. The actual path difference should be 2d. Part 2 calculates the smallest value of d such that we can see a destructive interference. Do you remember we have the summary like two minutes ago? When you have both ray going through a pi phase change, the equations in the data booklet are switched. Therefore, we have destructive interference right now, and it should be 2d equals to m plus half times lambda. So the d is m plus half times lambda divided by 2. For minimum d, we should make m being 0. So it is half lambda divided by 2. So you get d equals to lambda over 4. A practical advantage of such arrangement is so that the reflection of the light from the lens can completely eliminate a specific wavelength of the light. This is the end of today's Show Me How. Hope you find this helpful. If you have any other request, don't hesitate, leave your comment. I will see you guys next time.